we're going to dissect the orbit and its contents, and we're going to approach this dissection from superiorly by exposing the orbit uh, as we remove the frontal bone. But before we do that, let's just take a look again at the stumps of the cranial nerves that you can see after removing the brain and think about the nerves that ultimately we need to follow into the orbit because they've got some sort of uh, innervation function there. Okay. We'll follow cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, in through uh, the optic canal, and then multiple cranial nerves that have other motor and sensory functions. Cranial nerve 3 here on each side, the oculomotor nerve, has been broken when we remove the brain, but we'll follow that into the orbit, as well as cranial nerve 4, the trochlear nerve, I don't know that you can see the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. The V1, or ophthalmic division, will enter the orbit and have sensory functions there. And then finally, cranial nerve 6, the abducens nerve, will also enter the orbit. Okay. And cranial nerves 3, 4, V1, and 6 will all enter the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Now, to approach the dissection, what we need to do is peel out <clears throat> the dura, which is stuck to the frontal bone here, forming the roof of the orbit. And if you use a forceps, you can peel that away. We've peeled the periosteal dura away from the frontal bone in this area. And now the most effective way to remove the frontal bone forming the roof of the orbit is to either use a chisel and a hammer to break it into small pieces and then remove those pieces with a forceps. Or actually, it's even a little bit better if you just take a hammer and knock on the frontal bone and break it into small pieces and then remove it with your forceps. You can see that this is breaking the bone into nice small pieces, which you can then very delicately, as opposed to the hammering, remove those pieces to expose the contents of the orbit. Now, the first layer of tissue that you're going to see is the layer of the dura mater which enters the orbit and lines the inside of the bone there. And that is called the periorbita. And we're starting to see some of that already. Okay. Then the other tissue that you see primarily at this point would be adipose tissue that surrounds and protects the eyeball from damage. Now just take a fine forceps and carefully remove the periorbita and remove the adipose tissue here and because the nerves are so small that are entering the orbit and innervating different structures, any small little strand that you see as you're plucking away the connective tissue should be left behind because it probably is one of the important nerves that we're going to be looking for throughout this dissection. We've literally spent about the last hour or so plucking the little blobs of fat like you see here out of the orbit now that we've removed the roof of the orbit formed by the frontal bone. And by doing that, we exposed a lot of the nerves and uh, muscles already. Now, the muscle that you're going to see quite high within the orbit on the medial side of the orbit, and for orientation, this is the midline of the head where the falx cerebri is attaching to, uh, to the ethmoid bone. And again, here is the superior oblique muscle. And entering it way at the posterior portion of the muscle belly, you see its nerve, cranial nerve 4, the trochlear nerve. And as we do a little more dissection, we should see the trochlea, the pulley that this muscle passes through. And that's the derivation of the name of this nerve. Another cranial nerve that enters and innervates structures within the orbit is the trigeminal nerve, specifically the V1, or ophthalmic division. And an easy mnemonic that you can use to remember the three major sensory branches of this nerve uh, would be NFL, like the National Football League. And starting medially, working laterally, there's a nerve called the nasociliary nerve. Then right down the dead center of the orbit is the frontal nerve. And laterally is the lacrimal nerve. Now let's take a closer look at each of these. Sometimes students confuse the nasociliary nerve for the trochlear nerve because it appears to be innervating the superior oblique muscle. But we have cut the belly of the superior oblique so that we can reflect it out of the way. And although it's close, the nasociliary nerve is sending medial branches, but not to that muscle. Instead, those are innervating these ethmoidal air cells or sinuses that are just medial to the orbit. Okay, so again, this is the nasociliary branch of V1. Okay. The frontal branch is the origin of a nerve that you saw in the very first dissection of the head and neck unit, the supraorbital nerve shown here. The other terminal branch of the frontal nerve is the supratrochlear nerve, which is slightly more medial. And then finally, the L of our NFL was the lacrimal nerve, 
And that is a sensory branch of cranial nerve 5 that's innervating the lacrimal gland shown here in the lateral corner of the orbit. And this is the sensory branch of the trigeminal nerve that will carry parasympathetic fibers from a different cranial nerve to stimulate lacrimation or tearing from this gland. Now the other things that we can start to see in the orbit here already would be a large vein traveling through the superior part of the orbit, the superior ophthalmic vein, and this is a vein that we talked about quite a while ago when we dissected the face. It is the anastomotic connection between the facial vein or angular vein and the cavernous sinus within the head. So infectious material could potentially pass through that anastomosis from superficial structures back into the cavernous sinus and cause infection within the skull. Now if we get that out of the way, we can start to see some of the muscles within the orbit. And the most superior muscle that you see is not going to move the eye, but instead it's going to insert into the upper eyelid. It's called the levator palpebrae superioris muscle. And if we could separate that out, okay, hopefully you can see that there's another muscle just deep to it here that is in fact attaching to the eyeball. It's called the superior rectus muscle. Now if we cut these muscles and reflect them back, we should be able to reveal a branch of the nerve that innervates them, and that would be cranial nerve 3, the oculomotor nerve. Okay, so here we have a branch of the oculomotor nerve okay, innervating the levator palpebrae superioris muscle after penetrating the superior rectus muscle. We've done some further dissection, and now we're ready to show you some of the deeper structures, but before we do that, again, let's look at some of the things we have already. This is the superior oblique muscle that you see very high along the medial uh, wall of the orbit, and its nerve, cranial nerve 4, the trochlear nerve, entering along the posterior part of the belly. And let's just flip those out of our way. Also, another nerve heading toward the medial side of the orbit was the nasociliary, a branch of V1, also the frontal and lacrimal nerves were the other branches of V1, and we are going to get those out of the way so that we can see some of the deeper structures. Now, you shouldn't necessarily cut your frontal nerve, but we're going to just for demonstration purposes here so we can see the deeper structures better. Okay, again, all of those are branches of V1, the ophthalmic division. Now, we cut the levator, palpebrae, superioris, and superior rectus muscles, and by reflecting them, we can see better the oculomotor nerve Okay, the superior branch of the oculomotor nerve entering those bellies and providing innervation to them. This is the main trunk of the oculomotor nerve entering the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, which we have opened so that we can see the nerves better as they're approaching the orbit and entering it. Okay. Now, looking at the eyeball itself for a moment, you can see, as we were talking about earlier, that you need to be very careful about any little delicate strands that you see running through the orbit as you're pulling out the little globs of fat. And these are perfect examples of the types of strands that you should save. They're called ciliary nerves, and they are going to provide sensory and autonomic innervation to the eyeball. Okay. Now, if we follow these nerves posteriorly, what we're going to find is that there are many such nerves that ultimately will all converge just lateral to the optic nerve, which is here, Okay, and just medial to the lateral rectus muscle, which you see here. Okay. So again, for orientation, we've got cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, entering the back of the eye. And we've got the lateral rectus muscle here along the lateral wall of the orbit with its abducens nerve entering the muscle belly as such. Okay. And again, between lateral rectus and the optic nerve, follow these ciliary nerves posteriorly, and you'll see where they all converge at a structure called the ciliary ganglion. This is one of four different kinds of parasympathetic ganglia within the head, and uh, it's very unusual to be able to dissect a parasympathetic ganglion, so we'd like you to be able to find this. Now, often you can see multiple contributions into the ciliary ganglion. It would receive sensory fibers from the nasociliary nerve. It will receive autonomic or preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the oculomotor nerve. Okay. And we can see that coming down here. Okay. And then also there would be sympathetic fibers passing through. 
that we were not able to dissect in this case. But again, just follow these very delicate, short ciliary nerves from the back of the eyeball posteriorly, and you'll find the ciliary ganglion, a parasympathetic ganglion. We've turned the cadaver over so that we can dissect the inferior oblique muscle. Now this is the only muscle that attaches to the eyeball and has an anterior origin. It's going to originate from the anterior medial corner of the orbit and pass back diagonally or obliquely to attach to the inferior surface of the eyeball. The easiest way to expose this without destroying the rest of your dissection is to dissect it from below. So what we've done here is found the bony margin, inferior margin of the orbit, and used a scalpel to cut right through that tissue just below the edge of the orbicularis oculi muscle. And then if we reflect that superiorly, again, as you're used to from your dissection, you will pluck out those small blobs of fat to expose the structures around the eye itself. Now here you can see the inferior oblique muscle very nicely. Again, it's originating from this anteromedial position in the bony orbit and passing back diagonally and attaching to the inferior surface of the eyeball here.